I'm 12 News investigative journalist Erica Stapleton, and I want to break down our series of reports on extreme heat in Arizona's prisons. We're talking about this now, in the middle of winter, because the Department of Corrections took several months to turn over public records we requested last summer. Some of the most telling were the department's medical records that detailed heat-related emergencies. People at Perryville Prison. That's torture. Falling victim to extreme heat. It's unacceptable. Last year, the I-Team uncovered that some cell temperatures at Perryville, the woman's prison in Goodyear, got as hot as 109 degrees in July, according to the Corrections Department's own records. Now, new records obtained by the 12 News I-Team raise questions about safety. The department turned over reports from 13 incidents in July 2023, where inmates or employees reported having heat illness symptoms, including dizziness, heat exhaustion, and some losing consciousness. Three different times, inmates had to be transported out to a Brazo West hospital for further care. And one time, a corrections employee was sent to the hospital after doing temperature checks. In another case, employees were putting ice in the swamp coolers on the roof and had to stop because they felt unwell. One was sent home. Another time, a corrections employee was sent home after telling a supervisor, this heat is killing me. When the state takes away somebody's freedom, it is our obligation to keep them safe. What's happening with these extreme temperatures shows me that the Department of Corrections was not taking people's safety seriously at that time. State Representative Annalise Ortiz is on the state's Independent Prison Oversight Commission, formed last year. That includes the guards. People that are working in our prisons should not have to go to a workplace where they may be sent to the hospital because it's too hot. She's not the only one fired up. I and mean, that can have serious health impacts or potentially even result in death. I'm not surprised by it, but I'm still horrified that anybody should be asked to live in those kinds of conditions. Michelle Deitch and Noah Barth are both considered prison system experts. Noah, the prison monitoring director with the Pennsylvania Prison Society. I mean, this is of concern for anybody in custody, but especially anyone who's elderly or immunocompromised or in other ways might be medically vulnerable and Michelle running the Prison and Jail Innovation Lab at the University of Texas at Austin. You're not going to get staff to want to work in a place where it is that miserable in the summers. They're wearing heavy uniforms. They may be wearing Kevlar vests. They are at risk as well. Not to mention rehabilitation efforts. High temperatures create a very high level of tension among people who are incarcerated. It can lead to violence and outbursts and irritability. About half a dozen prison employees reached out to the I-Team to share heat concerns, but none went on the record for fear of losing their jobs. We also heard from dozens of incarcerated women and their loved ones over the summer, calling conditions unbearable, especially in the areas that had swamp coolers instead of air conditioning. It's stressful, it's tense, it's hot. State Prison Director Ryan Thornell did an interview with us in mid-July, before the department released any of their heat records. The response has been good in terms of urgency, attention. After our interview, the director went to Perryville to check temperatures for himself. Within days, the complex had misters, free ice, and relaxed rules to help with heat relief. The prison's warden also stepped down. But through the rest of the month, some cells still had triple-digit temperatures. Those bags of ice are going to melt very quickly in extreme temperatures. I'm happy they took those measures, but we need permanent air conditioning upgrades. For the past six months, the I-Teams requested more than a dozen times to talk with Director Thornell again. But the department's media relations team repeatedly declined and never provided times when he would be available. Thornell previously stated that new ACs for Perryville were in the budget for the end of 2024, after next summer. In an email statement, the department said the HVAC project at Perryville, quote, remains a top priority and that the contractor, expected to be selected this month, will set the timeline for when new air conditioners will be installed. Do you have faith the Department of Corrections will be prepared by next summer? I will say that in the past, I have not had a lot of faith in our Department of Corrections. I am confident that Director Thornell understands the gravity of this situation. After reporting on extreme heat at Perryville Prison last summer, we wanted to see if other state prisons had similar problems. In another records request, I obtained temperature logs for all prisons statewide, and what I found raises questions about safety and standards.
There's an expectation of extreme heat in the summer. This is Arizona, like we all know how hot it is here. How Arizona's Department of Corrections handles that extreme heat, not so much. Inmates and their loved ones first started complaining to the I-Team last summer that some of their prison cells were too hot. So the I-Team wanted to know how hot and requested July 2023 temperature logs for all Arizona prisons. Here's what we found. In all prisons, the highest temperatures ranged from 88 degrees to 111 degrees inside. That top temp was recorded at the men's prison in Kingman. Perryville Women's Prison in Goodyear had the second highest, with certain cells hitting as high as 109 degrees. There were 11 days in July where cells at Perryville hit triple digits. Lewis Prison in Buckeye also had multiple days where certain cells tempted in the 90s, once hitting 100 degrees, according to the logs. And some facilities, like Douglas and Yuma, consistently recorded cooler temperatures inside, most days in the 70s and 80s. Well, it doesn't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me at all. John Fabricius saw a lot in his 15 years incarcerated in the Department of Corrections, getting out in 2018. And in that time, I was at nine different complexes including the prison in Kingman, which had the hottest cells in July. It's really hot in those buildings. It's analogous to locking yourself in your attic or something like that in the summer. I mean, it's hot. John now serves as the executive director for Arizonans for Transparency and Accountability in Corrections. Because the watchers can't watch themselves. We uncovered more than just hot temperatures. The logs show that most facilities checked all temperatures twice a day, in the morning and afternoon. But the records all looked different, some handwritten and hard to read. It appeared that the prison in Safford only recorded outdoor temperatures, and the warden at La Palma Correctional Center in Eloy admitted they only started doing temperature logs in August and had nothing to show for July. Then there was this phenomenon. Another unit at the Kingman prison had the exact same temperature readings down to the decimal point on 11 different days. For example, one dorm area was recorded repeatedly to be 90.2 degrees in the mornings, but each afternoon, the temperatures would be different, sometimes a 20 degree swing cooler. It didn't make sense, and neither the Department of Corrections nor the GEO Group, the company contracted to run the prison, would explain it. We should all know exactly what's going on in there, what's happening, and we don't. We took our findings to three other outside sources. No human being should be asked to live under those kinds of conditions. It's unacceptable and it's inhumane. That is not safe. That is not healthy. Including Noah Barth, the prison monitoring director with the Pennsylvania Prison Society. He also consulted with Arizona's new independent prison oversight commission. What do you make of the record keeping overall? A lack of uniformity just raises some questions about how they're going about monitoring temperatures. The department has not answered when we've asked what they consider to be excessive heat or any of the other questions we've asked about our findings in their temperature logs. We did find this department order from 2019, listing a maximum indoor temperature at 80 degrees. That means if you look at those July 2023 temperature logs, every state prison that recorded indoor temperatures would have violated these standards last summer. It seemed that some of them were hotter than others. When you don't have consistency of policy, then you can't have consistency of outcomes and expectations. Wouldn't it just be easier to get functioning air conditioners. And we have those. I mean, we're converting HVAC systems all over the state. We have been for the last few years. State Prison Director Ryan Thornell sat down with us in mid-July, before the department provided any of their logs confirming triple-digit temps inside cells. For the past six months, the I-teams asked more than a dozen times for a new interview with Director Thornell. Each time, the department's media relations team declined or didn't respond. I'm sorry that you didn't get a clear answer in the way that you and the public deserve. State Representative Annalise Ortiz is on the state's Independent Prison Oversight Commission, established last year. The purpose of this Oversight Commission was to foster more accountability and transparency, and it sounds like that didn't happen in this case. We sometimes get mixed reactions when we cover prisons. I get they're not supposed to be resorts and people are sentenced there to serve time for crimes. But as our reporting found, the heat can create unsafe conditions for inmates and prison staff. Not to mention, Arizona's prison system is funded by taxpayers. It's important to know if the money the state is spending is going toward equipment that's actually working. They're closed spaces where outsiders typically aren't allowed in. Prisons are possibly the least transparent section of our government. But in Arizona, the state's independent prison oversight commission, formed in 2023, got a glimpse inside. 
On our trip, the department was very cooperative. People were very candid, spoke with us. We had access to staff members, meet privately with people in custody. Noah Barth is the prison monitoring director with the Pennsylvania Prison Society. He came to Arizona to consult with the commission. But to really be able to provide oversight for all of the prisons, it's going to require a larger structure. After seven months of work, the commission, made up of state lawmakers and community members, issued a findings report to Governor Hobbs, saying they weren't well positioned for oversight. Two main reasons, time and resources. The commission was asked to take on a tremendous amount of work. State Representative Annalise Ortiz is on the commission. We had an outpouring of people in the community reaching out, and we realized that we needed a full-time staff member to be able to go through all of those inquiries and properly respond to people. One of the biggest complaints. We were hearing, especially in the women's prison, the temperatures were astronomical. The IT team uncovered that in July 2023, cells at Perryville Women's Prison in Goodyear got as hot as 109 degrees. The cells impacted had swamp coolers, not air conditioners. What does that tell you about the condition of prisons in Arizona? It's clear that the air conditioning systems in our prisons are not up to date. The I team looked at maintenance logs from Perryville from July 1st to July 26th and found that out of more than 250 reports, the department had the most orders for HVAC work. The records provided to us showed the department spent more than $14,000 on those three weeks on things like filter swaps to total breakdowns of air conditioners and swamp coolers. In one complaint where swamp coolers weren't working, the maintenance worker wrote that with the high temps and high humidity outside, the hot temps were normal for swamp coolers. Another case, a medical unit complained the AC wasn't working. The maintenance worker wrote the equipment was too small for the space and should be replaced when funding is available. Are the taxpayers getting what they're paying for? John Fabricius, also an advocate for oversight, after serving 15 years in Arizona prisons. He now runs Arizonans for Transparency and Accountability in Corrections. I mean, you're taking a whole bunch of my paycheck every week to pay for this thing. I should know how it's working. We should all be demanding that. The HVAC work we reviewed in the limited records provided to us are a drop in the bucket if you look at the department's annual budget more than a billion dollars. The Department of Corrections has more than enough money. They need to look at their budget and find ways that we can use our tax dollars more efficiently and in a way that keeps people safe. Replacing the swamp coolers at Perryville is in the state budget for the end of 2024. The Department of Corrections media relations team denied our interview request for this story, but sent an email saying that a project contractor should be selected this month. The state expects the Perryville project to cost $12 million. As for the Prison Oversight Commission, Governor Hobbs hasn't yet given any directive after receiving the preliminary report, but Representative Ortiz has a bill out this session that would create a committee and office to investigate prison complaints and outline specifically that they'd have oversight on livable temperatures in prison facilities. It's unacceptable to have triple digit temperatures inside those cells. As for the timeline on when those upgrades at Perryville will be completed, the Department of Corrections previously told us by the end of 2024, but later said a contractor would set the timeline. After sharing our reporting with some lawmakers, they're demanding the department work to make changes before next summer. If you have a tip you'd like us to investigate, you can reach out at connect at 12 newscom Thanks for watching this special report. For the I-Team, I'm Erica Stapleton.